Welcome to episode 46 of Southern Gospel Now, your weekly update and look inside Southern Gospel music. Southern Gospel Now is made possible by southerngospelprizes.com. Currently, you can register to win the Karen Peck and New River Win It Before You Can Buy a Prize Pack, featuring the group's soon-to-be-released CD, 222. You'll find all the details at southerngospelprizes.com. We begin this week sending out our thoughts and prayers to Jason and Monica Matthews of the Wilbanks. They had a home fire that took away everything last weekend. A GoFundMe account has been set up to assist the Matthews. Be sure to help if you can. Congratulations go out to Brian and Bethany Walker of Legacy 5. They welcomed their fourth child into the world on January 25th. Boston Robert Walker arrived at 7 pounds, 6 ounces, and 16 inches long. Our congratulations to the Walkers, mom, baby, and the rest of the family said to be doing well. Last year, Abraham Promotions introduced the largest gospel music festival ever to take place with 40 days and 40 nights of gospel music at the Ark Encounter. This year, the event is growing. Abraham Promotions President Ray Flynn tells us more. We are super excited about the expansion of the 40 days and 40 nights of gospel music at the Ark Encounter and now moving into the Creation Museum, uh, the sister park attraction of the Ark Encounter. You know, last year when we did this event, we were amazed that in the middle of the pandemic, we still saw nearly 40,000 people who came to the world's largest Christian music festival there at the Ark Encounter. And the bigger number was the fact that we saw almost 800 people who made decisions for Jesus Christ uh, during those 40 days. This year, 40 Days and 40 Nights of Gospel Music will take place August 2nd through September 10th. The Society for the Preservation of Bluegrass Music of America, otherwise known as SPIGMA, held their annual awards this past weekend. Some names that bluegrass gospel fans will be familiar with include Donna Ulysses, who won Songwriter of the Year and Female Vocalist of the Year. Alan Bybee won Bluegrass Mandolin Player of the Year. Alan Bybee and Grasstown won Bluegrass Instrumental Group of the Year. And Joe Mullins and the Radio Ramblers won Bluegrass Gospel Group of the Year and Bluegrass Band of the Year. You'll find a full list of the winners at bluegrasstoday.com. Our congratulations to all of the winners. The song The Lighthouse is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. Ronnie Henson wrote the song and has now recorded his first ever solo version of it. He explains why he decided to release a 50th anniversary edition of The Lighthouse. I didn't want to put all the modern loops and digital effects and stuff on the lighthouse because it would be like spray paint and graffiti on the Statue of Liberty, you know. I did a new version of it, and I think a a good version of it. But I did it to honor all those people. Rusty's gone. Kenny's gone. For me to say, oh, man, I'm the singer Kenny Kenny or Rusty is, I I didn't do it for that. I, I did it to honor the song and honor the people that made it a landmark in gospel music. Kim Hopper recently released a solo album titled Softly and Tenderly. Kim tells us about the surprising inspiration behind the project that brings back some classic Southern Gospel songs. I was in a doctor's office about three years ago, and I I walked in and I thought, I recognize this music. And I began to, uh, I just sat down and started listening. And it was the old hymns of the church, which I was very shocked of, but it was the old hymns of the church. And they were done in very much of a, a, a mountain style, very acoustic, almost a little Celtic sounding. And I sat there and listened, and I just started to cry. I thought, they, this is the most beautiful way I've ever heard these songs portrayed. And I decided then that at some point I wanted to record an album like that. Lee Black has just released his first solo project. The songs on Beloved are best described as hymns with a modern feel. Here's a sneak peek of the first single, Lord God on High. God of power like no other, God who reigns outside of time, faithful, never changing, never ending, divine, hallelujah, hallelujah, to the Lord God on high. The sound recently dropped in to be on Facebook Live with Mark Lowry. Mark used the occasion to announce a tour that will be a year in the making, coming January 2023. We're putting together a tour to the West Coast with you 
and the sound. Come on. Hey, come on. We're, we're going to go to Washington State. We're going to go to Portland or Oregon, who knows where. Yeah. And it's going to be so much fun. We might all get on my bus. Uh, yeah, come on. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And get out there because we got enough bunks. Try all, try all right. The Collingsworth family's latest single is Not One Word. Phil Collingsworth Sr. says the demo of the song made a big impact on him. When we received the pitch from John Mathis on the song Not One Word, I sat back and listened to it for the first time, knowing that Jeff Steele, his son Brad, and John had all three written on it. And it made me realize how fluid our society has become and how nothing is in concrete, nothing is for sure, nothing stands as a standard except God's Word. And uh, when these lyrics began to roll out to, for my ears to hear for the first time, I immediately took it to the family and I said, I think we've got something here. Number one again this week on the Singing News Power 50 weekly chart, Greater Vision with Songs of Grace. This makes three straight weeks at the top for Greater Vision. That's it for this week's report. If you missed earlier editions, you can download them wherever you get podcasts or listen online at southerngospelnow.com. Southern Gospel Now is made possible by southerngospelprizes.com. I'm Greg Goodman reminding you to love your neighbor, and I'll see you next week for another edition of Southern Gospel Now. Thanks for listening.